Hi nerds, hi yogis, Carlene Rose here and welcome to a Nerdy Yogi YouTube channel. Today we are going to do a fire flow, so activating our, our inner fire or Agni as it's called in Sanskrit. So channeling all of that power from deep within, we'll have kind of fire themed poses that we're going to do today. First one we'll do is called ankle to knee pose, sometimes it's called double pigeon and sometimes, especially today, it's called fire log. So you'll come to um, have, let's do right leg on top first, come to have your knees and your ankles in line. If it's more comfortable, you can point your bottom foot a little. This foot doesn't have to be flexed necessarily, just whatever is more comfortable for you here, as long as your knees and ankles are kind of stacked on top of each other. You don't need to worry though about like pressing your knee down, anything like that. Your knee can be up here. As long as you're starting to just kind of feel a little stretch, that's perfect. Um, we're not really necessarily worried about pressing the knee down and stretching it. We're just going to let gravity do the work for us while we start warming up the breath. So grounding into the earth with your sits bones, really wave the spine tall, extending long through the crown of your head. Again, letting gravity just do its thing with your legs, starting to open up your hips. And from here, you're going to inhale to the base of your belly, inhale in all directions, and exhale Exhaling through your nose, squeezing all of the air in and up and out through your nose. Inhale here, exhale. This is our victorious breath. This is how we're going to channel a lot of that deep core power and a lot of that inner Agni. So inhaling again and exhale, really squeezing everything in and out. So now we'll start adding some movement with our arms. So inhale here, we're gonna take fists of fire. So you're gonna take fists and you're just gonna blow around in the spine. Fists of fire can come to your chest. Inhale, reach back up, exhale, bigger arch your spine and fists of fire are gonna come to your side. Inhale up, exhale, alternating. Inhale, exhale. Starting to warm up our spine. Been keeping that breath going that whole time. Awesome. Inhale, reach up, hands come to heart center. Namaste or Anjali Mudra. Take one more breath. And exhale, we'll switch legs. Now we'll let our left leg be on top, have the left hip start opening up and come back to our breath. We really want to keep that breath the entire practice. So think about expanding your low belly, your breathing diaphragm, like 360 degrees. Fill with air and exhale, squeezing it in and up. Inhale. Last time. Well, last time before we add movement. Keep that breath going, but inhale, reach up. Exhale, fists of fire come to your chest. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, a little bit bigger rounding of your spine as fists of fire come to the belly. One more round here. Very nice. Inhale, hands reach up and come to heart center in Namaste Anjali Mudra. Now from here, we will take a little more, more intense breath and I'm gonna turn it side so you can see me. We'll do some quick fire pulses. So inhaling here, you can have your fingertips behind you. You want long spine extending through the crown of your head, legs lift up. They're in sort of a boat pose, but I want your knees open because we'll do some pulsing here. So you can have, again, your support here or if you really wanna try it, arms can extend out in front of you. We'll do that breath, but we'll do it faster. So we'll get some breath of fire here as we pulse. So inhale, we'll do it slow to start and exhale. Inhale. And then the pulses. And again, feel free to put your hands behind you and inhale. A few more here. Awesome, inhale, reach up, 
Exhale, fists of fire, bring you down to the earth. Now we'll do some rocking and rolling. Feels good on your spine, nice little massage. And you can do smaller rocking and rolling, whatever is easiest for you to make your way onto hands and knees. I want you to tuck your toes under, sit kind of back onto your heels and roll yourself. Coming up onto this kneeling position, we'll take our fists of fire again, but we're gonna kind of counteract the movement that we just did. So inhale, reach up. Exhale, fists of fire to low belly as you lean back. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, you don't have to lean back very far. Just getting your abdominal wall, a little bit on the front of your legs. Two more here. And last one. Some inhale reaches you up. This time plant fingertips onto the earth, really strong palms, strong, um, well, lightweight on your, on your wrist right here, but really strong fingertips and palms everywhere else. You can start to pedal out your feet. We'll take some more fists of fire movement in our vinyasa. So inhale, bending your knees and elbows, get a little bit of momentum, right leg lifts, exhale, bring your knee into your chest, really lifting up, pressing away from your mat, lifting your right knee into your chest, and exhale, step your right foot towards your right thumb. Inhale here, prepare a long spine, bending your back knee, rolling yourself in and up. We're gonna come into a high lunge, Arms extend overhead, inhale here. Settle into the pose for a moment. And we'll do those fists of fire lunges. So inhale, exhale, fists of fire, come to low belly and you bend your back knee. Inhale, lift up, exhale. Inhale, lift up last time, exhale. Keep that breath going. From here, I want you to inhale, reach forward, fingertips plant in front of you, wider than your shoulders now. Right knee is bent, left knee steps in to meet your right. Wave your spine long. We're gonna do a warrior three preparation. So I want you to remember this pose. So spine is long, then from here, you can find where your leg extends. Fingertips are on the earth, really supporting you. The important thing in this pose is not necessarily straight legs, it's the extension of your spine. So start with that, and then again, see where that leg stretches. Your legs can still be bent here. You can be closer to the ground, wherever you have to be, but healthy spinal alignment is where you wanna start. Then from this warrior three preparation, we're gonna step back only about halfway, um, halfway back on your mat. Rolling yourself back up into sort of a standing position. You're gonna ground into the earth here. We're gonna do fists of fire again, but you're gonna lift your back legs, so really balancing, lifting your knee. If you want, you can even do a kick of fire here. <sighs> Inhale, steps you back about halfway, really grounding into the earth with your right foot, lifting everything in and up. Left leg can kick. One last time here. Exhale, your kick of fire. If you stumble and waver, hey, that's totally cool. That happens. Fire moves and dances, right? So, channeling our fire. Now from here, you can either come back into that warrior three preparation or come into a full warrior three. Arms can reach out in front of you. If you have a wall here, you can balance on your wall too. I'm probably a little close, but that's okay. So inhaling here, and we're gonna do some fire warrior. So inhale, exhale, knee comes into chest, and fist of fire to low belly. Inhale up, exhale. Last time here, inhale, and exhale. Now no matter where you are, fingertips plant onto the earth, left foot steps all the way back this time, left hand plants underneath you, extend your right arm towards the sky, and from here, finding that first edge of stretching your right leg, starting to open up the hips and the leg that we just worked so much. And take in how awesome it is that you just did that challenge. And from here, Plant your fingertips, strong palms, come back into your downward facing dog. Pedal out your feet for a moment. Come back to the breath if it went anywhere. Sometimes it has a 
habit of doing that, but you want to make sure you are breathing through all of these poses. And from here, slight bend in your knees and elbows as you lift your left leg to the sky. We'll try that whole challenge on this side. So exhale. Knee comes into chest, really lifting up, creating a lot of space there and stepping your left foot to your left thumb. Inhale here, prepare a long spine, bending your back knee, waving yourself in and up, coming into your high lunge. Settling into this pose for a moment. Inhale, reach up and exhale, fist of fire lunge on this side. Inhale up, exhale. Inhale, last time here. Exhale, very nice. Inhale, reaches you forward. Strong fingertips on the earth. Again, fingertips are a little bit wider than your shoulders for this. Really bending into your front leg, bending into your back leg, stepping forward. You can even walk your fingertips forward if you need to create more space for your shoulders and spine. Extending your spine tall. And then from here, finding that first edge of stretch and balance for your warrior three preparation. Really grounding strongly into the earth with that left foot. And from here, stepping your right foot about halfway back on the mat, really grounding into your earth, rolling yourself in and up, coming into kind of that modified high lunge. Already doing a little bit of fire dance, that's all right. <laughs> Inhale here, prepare. Exhale, leg lifts up, fists of fire, come to low belly, you can even kick out through your heel. Inhale, steps you back. Exhale, really lifting up from the earth, grounding strongly into your left foot. Inhale, and exhale. Some kicks of fire, very nice. And from here, leaning yourself forward at your hips, hinging forward here. If you want, place your fingertips on the earth, coming into that warrior three prep. I'm gonna step back just a little, <laughs> you can balance on a wall, on the floor, whatever is easiest for you, but really pressing out through both legs. Inhale here and exhale. Fists of fire of your fire warrior. Inhale, extend. Exhale. Inhale, last one. Exhale. Very nice. Now, of course, you're doing this on your fingertips. You're just moving your leg. Full heart to have your fingertips off the earth and move your arms. But from here, stepping all the way back onto your mat, Right hand plants beneath your shoulder, right shoulder, left arm extends to the sky. And then from here, extending your left leg, just finding that first edge of stretch. Stretching out all that work we just did on that left leg. And from here, planting fingertips, strong palms, step yourself back to your downward facing dog. Cut out your feet again. Great way to stretch out the backs of your legs. Now we're gonna take all of that heat and energy that we just created, move it through our body, get everything nice and synced. So inhale onto your toes, bending your knees and elbows much deeper this time, and then wave yourself forward, coming into a plank. Come onto your knees, lower through chaturanga. Inhale here, prepare, roll yourself in and up, and exhale, back to down dog. Now from here, we're going to take a bit of a uh, more of a yin kind of stretch sequence to cool down for the rest of class. Uh, this pose is called dragon in yin, so fits with the fire theme. Dragons obviously breathe fire, which is awesome. <laughs> and who doesn't want to have some of that in their life, right? So from here, inhale, right leg lifts, exhale. You're going to lift your knee into your chest and step it just to the outside of your right hand. You can even walk your right hand in a little and bring your um, foot so it's just under your knee, just under your hips, so you have a little better alignment there. Hands are just slightly to the inside of the foot and come onto your back knee. If you want, you can point your toe. If that feels better, you can get a blanket underneath your knee or your shin if that's going to help. Wherever you want, or whatever you want, I should say, to make this pose comfortable. But from here, long spine, and just kind of sit in this stretch. You may notice or recognize this 
as being called runner's pose or lizard's pose or depending on which style of yoga you're practicing. Today it's dragon pose, so holding our dragon here. There's a few variations. I'll walk through them real quick and you can decide which ones you want to take. So you can stay here in a baby dragon pose. You can take dragon flying high, so hands come to the top of your leg, really lifting up and stretching your hip flexors. You can take your dragon flying low. If you want to come onto your forearms here onto the earth, remember to maintain that length, wave of length in your spine. If you want, you can also twist your dragon, so staying on the left forearm, but twisting open, you can extend your right arm towards the sky. I like the variation too of rotating your palm behind you opening the shoulder. You can try winged dragon, where you come onto the outer edge of your front foot and let your knee fall open. And again, here you're just on your forearms. You can also do winged dragon on your hands up here if that feels better. So find whichever dragon variation that you want to hang out in. For a few more breaths. You can try a few of them, maybe you want to do a couple of them today, whatever feels best for you. Again, you can tuck your toes under on the back leg if that feels a little bit better to have kind of a bend at your knee, or again, get a pillow, anything like that. But maintaining the length in your spine, finding the first edge of stretch with whatever variation you choose. And then no matter where you are, everyone come back up. We'll do a variation of a dragon split. So instead of coming to a full split, just sit back towards your heel. You can leave your front toes kind of pointed or flex your feet and get a bit deeper stretch on the right leg. Remembering to wave your spine long. Remembering to keep that breath this whole time. And walking yourself forward, planting your fingertips and palms firmly on the earth, stepping back to downward facing dog. Pedaling out your feet, feeling all that energy just on that right side. So now we'll stretch out our left leg as well. So bending your knees and elbows here, lifts your left leg high. Exhale, coming to that core plank, really lifting up, stepping your left foot just outside your left thumb. You can walk it back, step your left hand just a little bit further into the mat so that your uh, ankles and knees are in line, or ankle and knee, I should say. And then from here, coming onto your back leg, you can point your toes if that's more comfortable, waving your spine long, extending through the crown of your head. You can stay here in baby dragon, Take your dragon flying high. You can also try the other variations on the ground, on your forearms. So your dragon can be flying low. And with the flying low, your knee is still kind of hugging towards your body, towards your shoulder. It's not winged out yet. You can stay planted on your right forearm. And the left arm extends to the sky for a twisting dragon. Again, you can rotate the palm behind you as well and wrap your arm around your back. It doesn't have to go all the way around wherever it lands the spine, as long as you're getting a stretch in that shoulder. Or you can try the winged dragon variation. It's one of my favorites. Coming onto the outer edge of your left foot and letting your knee open just to its Capacity. Again, it's one of those letting gravity do the work on this, but waving the spine long. You can untuck your back toes again if that feels better. If you want even more of a challenge, you can even lift up off of your back leg. That's fine too. Feel a little more of an active stretch. Whichever variation you choose, we're going to stay in it for a couple more breaths. Remember 
starting to inhale in that 360 direction in your low belly and exhale, squeeze everything in and out. Now walk yourself back up, back to center, coming into that variation of dragon splits. So sitting back towards your right heel, left toes can stay pointed or left toes can flex. You can sit a little bit deeper. Inhale, waving your spine long. From here, walking yourself forward, finding your fingertips firmly stepping back to down dog, pedaling out your feet. Notice how open both of your legs feel. Now for, from here to kind of sink all of that energy again, come onto your heel or come onto your toes, bending knees and elbows, waving forward to plank, come onto your knees, lower through chaturanga, inhale here, prepare, exhale, rolling in and up. And this time, coming back into a child's pose. So just sitting on your heels here. You can have your knees wide. You can have your knees together. It's your child's pose. You decide how, how it's comfortable for you, what's going to feel good. And from here... Coming onto your back, we'll make our way to the earth for our final resting pose. My favorite ways to end the yoga sequence is just windshield wipering the legs back and forth. And then from here, you can walk your feet out wide and let your knees just kind of knock towards each other. Whenever you're ready, you can walk your feet out long, coming into that final Shavasana, extending out onto the mat. Really letting all of that um, power and agony that you just created in that flow settle into your body so you can use it uh, more throughout the day. We did a bit of a yin-yang practice there, so we had some of the heat to start, I guess, yang-yin, because we started with heat end with cooling down, but we still built all of that fire from the inside out. So hope you enjoyed that flow. I do hope to see you on the mat again here soon. So make sure you are subscribed to the YouTube channel. You'll get notifications when the new videos come online, as well as exclusive content for you on the League of Nerdy Yoga's email list. There's a link for you in the uh, description below. Namaste.